Hey guys, what's up? This is Don and welcome to another Cinema 4D and After Effects tutorial. And today I'm going to be showing you how to create this scene right here. I called it the Gribbler because uh, there's a tool for Cinema 4D called Gribble uh, which creates like uh, this kind of look, uh, you know, with the cubes and whatnot. So, I don't know, Gribble, that's that's why I chose that name. But uh, anyway, I posted a preview of this uh, yesterday, and uh, a lot of you seemed to uh, like it. So, here we are. This could be quite a long tutorial, though, so I will be going quite quickly. Um, but I think um, we should be fine following along. Okay. So, in the cinema, that's where we're going to be starting and then later we're going to be going into uh, some After Effects stuff and just to do a little bit of uh, compositing alright so the first thing we're going to build is sort of the main section of the scene uh, sort of like the walls uh, the larger cubes so for this I will get a cube set the size to 100 by 100 by 100 and then I will go to get another cube and make this one 2000 by 2000 by 2000 but uh, you want to go to the Y uh, in the attributes over here and make it a thousand so we have this larger cube and we're going to use this as a guide or reference um, for the smaller cube uh, when we use the cloner object. You'll see what I mean in a second. But on this uh, larger cube, we want to give it 20 segments in X, 10 in Y, and 20 in Z. A lot of these numbers I am using, I already know what they should be because I've created this scene uh, twice already. Uh, the first time I lost the project file, so I had to recreate it from scratch again. So, if it seems like I'm just, you know, getting the right values every time, it's because I've already done this before. Anyway, I'm going to go to MoGraph, Cloner. Let's drop in the first cube into the Cloner. Change the mode to Object and drop in the second cube into the Object section. So, now the smaller cube is going to be cloned onto the larger cube and it looks something like this. We are going to shut off the larger cube and let's just rename it uh, walls ref for reference and then this smaller cube we'll call it single block and then we'll just call this walls uh, or let's say cloner walls Alright, I'm going to fly through onto the inside of this and let's see what it looks like from the inside. And uh, here we are. I'm going to get a new camera and let me just uh, change my icon size to smaller just so I can see more of them. Let's do the same over here and at the side here. Okay, so our new camera Let's call it uh, cam1 and the focal length I will choose a super wide angle of 15. This is one of the default uh, presets. Just so we can see a little bit more when we are on the inside here. I will enable growth shading lines shading method so we can see all of the segments. Next up we want to create uh, the feature in the middle uh, of our scene that uh, sort of secondary cube which is made up of uh, even smaller cubes so for this I'm gonna get a cube let's make it 20 by 20 by 20 so very small let's uh, get a little closer to it and I'm actually gonna jump out of this camera uh, it's very strange working in that super wide uh, angle. 
and then what I would do is to clone this uh, smaller cube. So let's call this uh, small block. Let's go to MoGraph Cloner. Uh, just a quick tip, if you ho hold AOT when you insert a new object, it will automatically become a parent um, of the object you currently have selected. So MoGraph Cloner and uh, there we go. We already have the hierarchy set up. Uh, we'll put the count up to 15. So there's a lot of these. And uh, we actually need to be in the grid mode. Uh, I'm in the wrong mode here. So if I go to grid array, set the Y value to 15. So 15 clones along the Y axis, 2 along the X and 2 along the Z. Let's set the X size to 20 and the Z size to 20 and uh, the Y size to 300. So it should look something like this. There's a bit of a gap here, so let's lower this to maybe 280. And there you go, that should fit perfectly. All right, so this is one of the pillars. So let me call this cloner pillars, uh, or cloner pillar. And we're gonna clone this to create more pillars. So we're gonna clone the cloner. And the way we're gonna do this is to use a plane as a guide. So if you drop in a new plane and set the width and height to 300 by 300 and put the width and height segments to just 3 and 3. And then if we select our pillars, or our pillar rather, and uh, hold AOT, go to MoGraph Cloner, and let's call this Cloner Pillars. And here we are going to go to the mode and change it to object. And in the object section, we're going to use this plane. And now these um, pillars are being cloned onto the vertexes or vert. I don't know what the plural of vertex is. It's probably vertexes. Uh, who cares? Anyway, let's uh, leave the distribution as that and then we just want to untick align clone so that this point upright. However, in the middle here, we have this extra set of pillars that we don't need. We only want the ones on the outside. So this four in the middle need to go. So how do we do this? Well, if we go to our plane, this is the reference for the clones. So what I will do is hit C to make it into an editable object and then go to point mode and we need to remove the points in the middle here because that's where the pillars are being cloned onto. So if I uh, hit the solo key, uh, that is a plugin I have called Magic Solo. It's free and you can get it from Nitroman's blog. Uh, some of you may already know who he is. He makes a lot of great plugins for C4D. So go and grab Magic Solo and install it. And it allows you to basically solo different um, sections of your scene. So you can work on them individually uh, without having all that other clutter. So I will select these four points in the middle and I'm just going to remove them. And this is going to make all of the polygons disappear, but that's fine. We still have the points, as you can see here. So that's all we need. And then I will unsolo. And now when we go back, you can see that the pillars in the middle have disappeared. Alright. The next thing we want to do is to make sure this is sitting on the floor. So... Uh, I think a value of minus 300 on the Y on the Y position should work. It's not doing anything. Uh, oh, all right, okay, I remember now. Uh, if you move the cloner, nothing is going to happen. You have to move um, your reference object. So let's make this minus 300. 
and this is going to make it sit directly onto the floor. Okay, this is looking good. Let's uh, create a new cube. Let's move it down to minus 300 also and set its size to 300 by 300 by 300. So it looks like this. And uh, we can create a new material really quick and call this the center light. Switch off the color channel and switch on the luminance channel and we can disable specular. Let's drop this onto the center block, which I'm gonna name right now. And uh, we now want another set of clones to sit on top of this. So if I get another small cube, 20 by 20 by 20, and then I'll hold AOT, more graph cloner, and let's go to grid array, two on the Y, 15 and 15 on X and Z, 20 in the Y size, and uh, 300 on the Z and the X size. So we have these. Look pretty neat. Let's uh, drop this down to be sitting flat on over here. Uh, it looks like minus 130 should give me the right position. I need to increase the X and Y size to be 320 and 320. Alternatively, you can just eyeball this using these handles and uh, see what works best for you. And I'll just increase my clone count to 17 and 17. So this is the result. So as far as building the scene goes, that is it. What we now want to do is to add the animation onto all of these clones and then also just do some basic uh, texturing, lighting, and some render settings, and then we'll jump into After Effects for some uh, basic compositing. Okay, so starting with the walls, I will click on the cloner, go to MoGraph Effector, and then Random Effector. Let's go to the parameter, and uh, I am gonna zero out the X and the Y we only want our animation to happen on the Z axis. So this is gonna be going up and down and the sides are gonna be sort of coming in and out toward the center. I will set this uh, Z movement to 135. You can go larger or less. It just depends on how much uh, movement you want in your scene. So this is what it looks like. And uh, the way we animate this is to change the Effector mode. So, if I go to the Effector tab, the Random mode, we want to change this from Random to Noise. And Noise has animation switched on automatically. So, if we hit Play, you can see these are moving by the, uh, on their own. And uh, we just want to slow this down. So I'm going to choose an animation speed of just 15%. And you can change the scale uh, to sort of have a larger swooping motions or smaller motions. It's entirely up to you. 100% uh, on the scale is fine for me, so I will leave it like that. You can also try having the indexed switch ticked on, and that will give you a slightly different animation also. Uh, I think I maybe actually prefer this uh, indexed um, switch to be on. I think it gives me better animation. Okay, so that's the animation for the main walls. So let's call this random effector um, walls. And then we want to add the same type of effector to these cubes here. So, starting with the cloner pillar, we want to apply the effector onto the first cloner, not the second. 
the second clone would be affecting the pillars individually. What we want to do is to affect the individual blocks. So we need to go to the first cloner that we used. So with that selected, I will go to MoGraph Effector, random. Let's go to the parameters and this time we're going to zero out the X and the Z. So we're going to have movement up and down. Uh, actually, no, it's, that's the exact opposite of what I want. We're going to zero out the Y and put some movement onto uh, the X and the Z. But this is probably too much, so I will lower this down to maybe 25 and 25. Uh, that may be still too much, but we'll see once uh, what it's going to look like once we have the animation. So if I go to the Effector tab, I can go to the Random Mode and change this to Noise. There are also other modes. Uh, the Turbulence will also give you some animation. Uh, sorted does not give you an animation, so your two options are either Noise or Turbulence. And again, just play around with them and see which one will give you uh, the kind of animation that you would prefer. I'm going to slow down my animation. I think uh, around 25% should be fine. And I will tick indexed. And I prefer this movement to this sort of wavy alternative, which is on by default. Okay, looking pretty good. So let's call this uh, random effect um, small blocks. It's good to keep your scene organized. It's something that I've never been really uh, very thoughtful about, but I've uh, recently realized how helpful it is uh, just to keep everything organized, uh, especially if um, other people have to take over your project. Uh, I work at a studio now, you know, this is the first time, it's my first job where I've been working in a team of people, so it's been more uh, important that I actually organize my work. Anyway, uh, enough about my life story, let's say uh, carry on with this. I will go to MoGraph Effector, random. Uh, we're now placing this onto the top set of blocks here. So if we name this cloner top blocks and let's call this random effector top blocks. Let's go to the effector tab, set the mode to noise. Let's say I have it indexed and the animation speed down to 25%. And on the parameters, we are going to zero out the X and the Z and only have movement on the Y axis. And I uh, will turn this down to just 25. So that is how you add that um, animation to your scene. As you can see, we only used effectors and uh, no keyframes whatsoever. OK. So now that we have that done, what we want to do now is to start adding some lights and textures to make this uh, look good. So starting with a texture for the blocks, uh, the main blocks. What I would do here is to solo the single block and then double click to create a new material. Let's call it block mat or large block and we'll switch off the color channel let's go to the luminance channel and here we're gonna go to the texture and um, go to surfaces and tiles and uh, if we apply this to our cube we can see a live preview as we now change some settings. So we are going to leave the grout color. Uh, actually, no, we need to change the grout color to white and the rest of the colors to black. And we'll maybe set the grout width to just 1% and the bevel width to 0. 
Um, let's see what this looks like. Okay, I think we need to keep that bevel width at at least 1%. And uh, we need to change the scale. I'll set the global scale to a 1000. And what this would do is to shift these lines to the edge. It just kind of expanded them. And uh, that's how we create the material. It's very basic. I'm going to go back and go to the reflection. Switch it on and have a, maybe a brightness of 35%. Go to the specular, uh, make it wider, but make it shorter. So we have something that looks like this. I will unsolo. And now if I go back to the scene and hit render, you can see what the blocks uh, now look like. All right, I am gonna apply this, uh, actually no, we need a different material. So if I create a new material, uh, basically black reflection, let's have a wider highlight, but make it shorter. And again, 35% um, of the reflection. And let's apply this onto these blocks here. And uh, that's it. that is how you create the textures. It's very, very simple, as you can see. Um, but there's one thing that's happening in my scene, which I don't quite like. If you look in uh, the reflection of the second material, I can see these cubes here. Now, you might want this in your scene, but I personally would prefer if uh, these cubes here were not reflecting these cubes. So, what I'm going to do is... Uh, I guess I could just switch off reflection, um, but then I like the way this light is reflecting from onto onto the cubes. So what I would do then instead is um, go to the walls. These are the ones which are showing up in the reflections. So if I go to Cinema 4D Tags, Compositing, I can go to the Exclusion tab and drag in um, uh, both the cloner pillars and the top blocks here. And now when I hit render, the reflections will no longer show up here, but these blocks are still reflecting the big uh, luminescent cube in the middle. So this is great. Let's uh, add a light to our scene. Oops, I keep uh, jumping out of uh, the room by accident. And I'm going to move this to be minus 300. And it's going to go right in the middle. And when I render, you're not going to see any difference because this light is being blocked by this cube. So obviously we need to fix that. So the way we do that is to go to the project tab of the light. And in the exclude section here, we are going to drag in the center block. So now the light is going to shine through. If I enable shadows, you can see what I mean. The pillars are casting shadows onto the walls here, um, but the light is completely ignoring this um, center block. I am going to switch off the shadows. I don't need them. And I'm going to go to visible light and switch on volumetric. And I keep jumping out of this. It's really annoying. Let me jump into my wide camera. This uh, might help out a little bit. And let's expand the volumetric light. You can just about see it. Let's uh, change it to visible. That will make it more obvious. And there you go. I actually prefer that look. And then I'll also go to the details and set the fall off to inverse square, physically accurate. And then just play around with the, these two handles. Uh, the smaller one right now is for the radius uh, of the fall off. And the other one is the size of the visible uh, glowing light. All right, this looks uh, pretty good to me. So. That's it really for the lighting. Um, again, very, very simple stuff, but I think it's actually very effective 
in the way it's working in our scene. You don't always have to be mega complex to get something which looks cool. All right. What I'm going to do next is um, target my camera to point at the center block here. So if I click on the camera, in the focus object, I will drop in the center block, go to the details tab of the camera, and map some rear blur because I want some nice depth of field in this scene. And then I'm going to go to my render settings, go to multipass. Uh, sorry, we'll do that later. Go to effect and depth of field. Um, the reason I got a little confused there is because in here we have a depth pass. I'm going to enable the blur and let's set the strength to 10. And when I hit render, we just get a nice blur in the background over there. I think it would be better though if this blur started sooner. So I want to focus the camera um, more toward the front of the cube. So if I create a new node and call this cam1 target, we can bring this down. And on the X position, I will set it to minus 150. And the Z the same, minus 150. And this is going to bring it to the front over here. And then I will target the camera onto that new node. And when I hit render, the blur just starts a bit sooner and is a bit wider in the back. OK, so looking pretty good. However, our render looks very choppy in some areas. And uh, it's not very smooth in a lot of the reflections. This is, of course, because of our anti-aliasing. So if I go to anti-aliasing, I will set it to best, 1 by 1, 4 by 4, with a threshold of 5%. And the filter, I will set this to Gauss animation. And uh, what that uh, Gauss animation does is slightly blur everything using a Gaussian blur algorithm. And uh, that just hides a lot of uh, imperfections, such as um, lines that may look pixelated and not smooth enough, or flickering issues. Uh, gossing it just helps out to hide uh, a lot of that. OK, so this looks pretty good. In the original preview, you may have noticed that uh, the light was flickering, this light in the middle. And I did this using expression. Uh, sorry, using Expresso. Expression is After Effects. Expresso is Cinema 4D. So if I right-click the light, Cinema 4D tags, and Expresso, I can drag the light into here. And then if I go to the Expo tab, I will search for Noise. And this is the sort of random number generator or wiggle um, if you are talking in terms of After Effects language. So on this noise here, what we're going to do is to drag uh, this little dot and pick whip it to the light. Go to general, and we want it to affect the intensity. So now if I were to go to my light, go to the general tab, and hit play, you can see that the intensity value is fluctuating. However, in some areas, it is actually going below zero. We don't want this to happen. So in the noise um, node, we want to click it and then change the this switch here to be switched on, where it says positive only, which means it's never going to go below zero. I am also going to increase the frequency to 7, uh, or maybe that's too much, maybe 6. So that way, it will flicker a lot faster. So if I just hit play, you can see it flickering, and um, it looks pretty cool. And if we go to the light, you can see the intensity going up and down. So play around with that value and uh, choose something which looks good for you.
All right. I'm really liking how this is uh, turning out. What I'm going to do now is to just uh, add a ba basic camera movement. Let me first of all increase my timeline to 12 seconds and move my camera. In fact, what I would do first is to set my final pose. This is what I want my final position uh, in the animation to be. So I will set the camera right here and press the keyframe. And then I will go to the start of the animation or of, of my timeline and then set my starting pose. This is where I want the camera to be at uh, the beginning of my timeline. I'm going to back it up right into one of these corners. Something like this. And I will hit a keyframe. Just one thing I need to change before I carry on is my uh, frame size. Let's make it 16.9. So 1 to 80 by 720. And this is going to be our starting frame. I think it looks really cool because we obviously have our focus subject here, but we also have this really uh, interesting looking close up details. So I will set this keyframe and then hit play. And uh, this is what this animation is going to look like. It's not exactly the same as the animation you saw in my preview video, but that's a good thing because it means that uh, each time you do this, your animation is likely to be different also. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that camera move. Nothing too fancy. It's pretty simple, but I think it uh, should work. And uh, as far as animation goes and lighting and everything, that is it. Before we render, we just want to set up a few things. Uh, first of all, I'm going to go to the mounter pass and add a depth pass. Switch on mounter pass and uh, go to the save tab. And you want to set a path for your image and also set a path for your multi pass image. Go to compositing project file and you want to save this and include 3D data and save for After Effects. For this to work properly, you need to have your Exchange plugins um, in correctly installed in your Cinema 4D and After Effects uh, plugin folders. There are a lot of videos covering that, so I will not show you how you do that. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this. Um, once you have your pads set for your uh, save for saving your images, you are you are good to go. You can go ahead and render your scene. I am gonna skip the video to when I'm in After Effects with my uh, raw renders from Cinema, and we'll just do a little bit of compositing. Okay, in After Effects, I'm gonna go to Import, go to my render, and I will load up this main.aec file. This is the compositing project file that we exported from Cinema 4D. So I'm going to hit open. And this is going to give me a comp code main. Now, I actually didn't do this correctly. So my depth pass was not uh, rendered out. But I'm just going to grab that as well as a PNG sequence. And I will go to interpret footage and make sure that it is the same frame rate as my um, uh, my main comp. This needs to be 24. Okay. Much better. Alright, so if I go to the main comp, you can see this is the animation we have. And uh, we also have that light in the middle of our scene. This is because After Effects I uh, was able to recognize the compositing project file and uh, because we ticked the include 3D data, our light and uh, one of the cameras has been carried into this scene. Okay, so the first effect I am going to add is some uh, chromatic aberration. 
so that's when you get like an RGB split in high contrast areas so what I would do is uh, go to my main layer effect color correction um, that's the wrong thing you want to go to channel and you want to hit set channels or shift channels rather I'm sorry I keep going all over the place here but it's shift channel and uh, we want to take the red from full off green full off and the same for blue and then what I would do is duplicate this three times and then starting with the top layer let's take the red from red the second layer green from green and the third layer blue from blue you can also change the colors of these layers if that uh, will help you to um, identify which is which okay and you wanna select all of them right click blending mode and add and just make sure we have a background below all of these layers and then to get the RGB split what you have to do is to just scale the two lower layers um, up a little bit so the first layer will go to 100.5 and the second layer will make it 101 and when we do that we'll get this uh, really cool looking RGB split all right we are now going to add an edge blur so new adjustment layer let's put this on top of uh, all of, on top of everything go to blur and sharpen and let's get uh, camera lens blur and put this on here I will set the blur radius to 10 and I am going to draw a mask so that we only blur the edges so if I hold shift and control the circle will draw from the center I want to set it to subtract and then feather it out by about 200 and maybe make it smaller so something like this just so we'll bring more focus to the object in the middle of our scene and uh, next up I will add a vignette so new solid let's make it black call it vignette and then just double click the ellipse tool and set this mask mode to subtract press F and feather this out also let's go for maybe 200 and then I will lower the opacity of this to be around 60 okay not, uh, not too shabby next up we're just gonna add some particles into the scene just to add a little bit of uh, atmosphere so I forgot to lay a new solid let's call this TP for trap code particular let's load it up go to the emitter section and set the emitter type to light we want to use the light in our scene as an emitter but it's only gonna work if the light is called emitter something so emitter like that and now you see that it's uh, working great we'll go to the trap code particular layer and change a few things the velocity we don't want this to be anything so zero out all of the velocity controls the size X Y and Z I'm gonna go for um, say 5000 by 2500 by 5000 so we have some particles floating in this uh, 3d space and they look pretty cool let's uh, go to the particle settings let's put the size up to maybe 10 and the size random to be about 25 percent uh, the feathering maybe push this up to about 65 and um, the opacity maybe lower this to around 60 or so 
Uh, we don't want this to be too obvious. We just want it to be pretty subtle. Let's uh, right click, go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and we're going to use Camera Lens Blur. But uh, this time, what we're going to do is use our depth pass to blur out particles which are in the background more than the particles in the foreground. So if I get the depth pass, drop it into our scene, we can switch it off, go to the camera lens blur effect, and set the blur map to our depth pass. And this will blur out stuff in the background more than stuff in the foreground. Because if we look at the depth pass, the darker areas are more in focus and the white areas are completely blurred out. And uh, this depth pass looks pretty cool. And we can use it for something else aside from just as a, um, as a depth map. So let me show you what I mean. If I uh, duplicate it and uh, switch it back on, I can set the blending mode to add. And that's just going to add a little bit of atmosphere to our scene. And I can control the opacity here. And uh, you can set this to whatever you want. I'm going to go for something quite extreme, maybe 65%. And what I can also do is to change its color. So if I go to Effect, Color Correction, CC Toner, in the mid-tones here, I can have like um, like a bluish color, something like this. I'm going to go for 0080FF. This is the motion squared blue. And then I'll go to the saturation and drop this to 50%. Or maybe 65. I'll hit OK. Go to the highlights and um, do the same. 0080FF and drop the saturation to about 65. So now we have uh, this nice blue hazy glow. And if you want it to be less dramatic and uh, less contrasty, you can blur out this layer. So go to Blur and Sharpen and uh, you want to use a uh, Gaussian Blur and I will put this up to maybe 50 and what this does is basically uh, diffuses this layer and doesn't make it as uh, dramatic so play around with this and uh, see if you can uh, come up with something that uh, you really like but um, that's it from me. Um, it's been a pretty long tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new.